person who's going to thank all of you for saying so late today. So our story begins in the first half of the previous century when ionizing radiation was the treatment of choice for a variety of uh, benign diseases, including tinea capitis, which is a fungal infection of the skull. And in Israel, a very special situation was created in which the government and before the, the Jewish authorities treated thousands of individuals, thousands of children for this disease with ionizing radiation in Israel and on their way to Israel, in Morocco, to Tunis, and Algeria. And uh, we have a court that was established in 65 to follow uh, after these people for health effects. Very soon in 1974, it was published in the Lancet that these people suffer from excess risk of, uh, of cancer. And, uh, um, and uh, just to complete the, the historical story, in 1994, the Israeli government established a law to compensate these people for diseases that were causally related to the radiation treatment. Now here you can see the, 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 the cohort. The cohort includes 11,000 irradiated individuals and two individually matched non-exposed population and sibling controls. And if we just focus on the radiation dose, we are dealing with medium to low doses. For instance, if we look at the brain, the brain absorbed a median dose of 1.4 gray, really medium dose, while the breast absorbed very low doses of 0.016 gray. Uh, just two words about meningioma. This is a tumor with female predominance, and obviously the vast majority of the tumors are sporadic, only about one to two percent are familiar. <coughs> the only established environmental risk factor is ionizing radiation uh, study. The first phase is familiar study. Uh, we are looking um, um, at, um, var at the genetic variants within families and across families, trying to see if there is anything in common for the uh, radiation, for the familiar radiation associated meningiomas. And then we thought to some somehow conceptually validate these results, the variants that we will find in the first, uh, uh, um, in the first uh, analysis, in the first phase, by looking at about 100 sporadic radiation associated meningiomas, meaning meningiomas that were, that has an association to the radiation, we have radiation in the background, but we don't have any other siblings with meningiomas and 100 irradiated controls that got the irradiation but did not develop meningioma or other tumors. Uh, and uh, we asked ourselves, of course, would the same variants appear in sporadic radiation associated meningiomas and or not appear in the irradiated controls? And in this way, we will be able to isolate and see if these variants are associated to the radiation and the genetic susceptibility. So here you have a picture of the families. Most of them, as you can see, are from Moroccan origin. And um, let's take, for example, the two heavy disease, uh, families, one with four rams and one unaffected, and one with two ram, rams and two unaffected. Uh, and we have identified about 15,000 variants. Uh, that are non-synonymous with minor alert frequency of less than 1%. <coughs> we work first family by family trying to isolate which variants <coughs> uh, appear are present in the affected and not present in the unaffected, going down um, in this family getting to 46 variants. I just wrote here two of the genes that might be interesting. And in this family we got in the same, uh, uh, in the same way to 64 variants. So we are right now in the, in, in, in the analysis of the families waiting to receive the, the some uh, uh, sequencing results from the 200 affected and unaffected. And just to uh, conclude, um, I believe that the search for radiation sensitivity marker could have a practical clinical implications in genetically susceptible individuals because this could uh, uh, bring us to recommendations to limit diagnostic, occupational, and therapeutic radiation exposure uh, in sensitive uh, individuals, uh, to recommend follow-up and early detection in these people, 
And also, this is, this is taken from uh, an editorial that Eric Hall wrote about our paper, that uh, there are implications for regulations because radiation protection in our days are based on the assumption that the human population is uniform in radio sensitivity. But of course, if this is not the case, we need to think of how we would like to set the guidelines, like personalized um, uh, guidelines. So I would just like to thank the uh, people in my unit, <coughs> who is here and who is deeply involved in these studies, and to the co collaborators outside the, uh, our, um, our unit, Professor Vajal Halston from UK, to Dr. Stewart from BNC, uh, from the Ontogenetic Units in Heimschild. Thank you very much. Right now, we, I, I didn't talk with them about genetic, uh, the, they know of our genetic analysis, we didn't get a collaboration, but right now we are collaborating on a pooled meta-analysis on their results with ours. So I'm aware of this. But of course, this is, these, these, uh, these are the, the, the doses that they receive are much, much higher. Thank you, Thank you Susanna. Thank you, everyone, for this lovely